name is Devin. I'm one of the Arts, Culture, and Heritage Portfolio Librarians here at the Greater Victoria Public Library. And I am here today talking with the Pacific Opera Victoria's Civic Engagement Quartet um, in our series, Opera 201, all about the uh, current status and future of opera. And I would love if the quartet would introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Simon, uh, and I'm a, I'm a bass from Montreal. Hi there, my name is Ryan. I am a counter tenor, originally from Newfoundland, but now living in Toronto. Hi there, my name is Mike Fan, Fan Zhu Ming. I am a tenor based in Toronto, the land of the Mississauga Credits, the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabeg, and Huron Wendat peoples, and I'm Chinese Canadian, queer, and non binary. Hi, my name is Rebecca Gray. I'm a soprano and composer, also zooming in from Toronto. All right, well, welcome to you all. And I have uh, some questions for you. So um, the first part of this question is, have you worked for indie opera companies before? And what are some of the benefits? And I know, um, Simone, um, as someone who has worked for both um, indie and uh, more established companies, um, what are some of the, maybe some of the differences and do you have a preference? And that, do you have a preference to all of you? Great, so I can start with this question. I have a lot of experience with indie opera companies, both performing, working with them, and I also have one myself as well too. So it's really interesting having been able to see all sides of the coin, which is something I didn't anticipate for starting out as a singer, but it's been really fantastic because throughout my beginnings as a performer, especially as an opera singer, through my undergraduate studies, my master's studies before I was out of school, I was already working and earning income as a performer and uh, as an improviser, for example, as an actor as well too in many projects. Some of them were more volunteer based or extracurriculars attached to school, but um, a lot of them were really fantastic. I've had the opportunity to work with organizations such as New Moose, Ray Opera or Renaissance Opera, which is actually based in BC, and uh, Lucky Penny Opera, for example, some examples. And it's been really exciting because there's a lot of really innovative work. There's a space for repertoire that isn't done as often, a space for new repertoire, a chance to really interact with colleagues that are very unique and often from different disciplines as well, too. In a lot of the traditional opera spaces, it's very centered on a very traditional repertoire and um, focus solely on opera and classical music, but there's also really amazing spaces where we're working with different genres of music, and there's theater actors, there's dancers, there's uh, lots of other different visual artists, for example, and work where there's things coinciding, which is really interesting for me as someone who hasn't just studied opera or just studied music, and it really allows me to explore a lot of those fields. And in 2017, I, before, I, I began performing opera in drag, which was something I didn't anticipate at all along my journey, but it really helped to realize my non-binary identity and it really freed me up to sing a lot of the repertoire that I've been very confined by, by my voice type and by my um, male presenting side, which is usually what I show in classical music. And it allows me to play with gender and be fluid, which is actually how I am, because gender is a spectrum after all. And it allowed me to create my opera company, Opera Queens, which presents opera in drag, gender bent and queerified, which has been super exciting. And providing that opportunity to others like myself who don't see those opportunities or see themselves reflected, particularly giving opportunities to BIPOC individuals such as myself who in a lot of queer spaces don't see themselves as people of color or indigenous to be reflected in that space and that brings me to some of the cons especially on the kind of artistic director side which is a role I hold as a founder as an artistic director of Opera Queens I also did so for a theater organization called Student Budget Productions and there's a lot of hours that go into emails a lot of the things behind the scenes because we're not just singing or creating we have to take care of everything from the lights to the scenery to the programs to the media outreach so there's a lot of things to build from scratch it also allows a lot of freedom and the ability to bring something totally new or something that doesn't exist yet into into 
existence has a lot of responsibility too because I bear a lot of the weight of a lot of the others and the responsibility to make sure because if it's uh, not only for me and my performance but also that of others at the same time it's very exciting it's very rewarding and because it's in spaces or with other disciplines that aren't traditionally in a lot of the the more traditional opera spaces it allows there to bring a new public to classical music to introduce it and to reach out to other groups that haven't always felt included so overall it's been very rewarding and it's really allowed so much more richness in myself i've learned so much about myself and be able to really expand my horizons as a person as a performer and uh, as much as it has been demanding and a lot of um, sleepless nights, it's also been super rewarding and I wouldn't trade it for anything else. Thanks, Mike. Uh, it's so interesting because I think you, you name a, a good uh, difference is that uh, big main opera companies have such a big audience that they need to do a repertoire that will fit uh, that will fit this broad audience. As indie opera companies will often target different demographic or uh, so this allows to have drag shows or uh, to have uh, new work or to have work that is really centered on specific communities that are usually under deserved by, um, by the main opera companies. And uh, this comes mostly from the fact that uh, major opera companies will produce show that uh, that costs millions of dollars to produce, like a, a main stage opera with all the sets and a full orchestra and everything that comes is over a million dollars to produce, uh, which uh, requires to fill a house of more than a thousand person. And um, on one side, it's great because as opera singers, there's nothing more amazing than to sing with a full orchestra. And I think for the audience is the same to have a full orchestra and and uh, a full chorus and five or six or eight professional singers sing at the same time is such a fantastic experience. Um, but this has so many drawbacks in which you need to fill fill the the, the hall uh, fully. And so uh, it's harder to experiment with new operas because if you present a new opera, you never know if people will show up. And if you have no one showing up, then you're in the red. Um, so, so yeah, there's some pros and cons on every side. Uh, I think one of the pros of indie opera companies is that uh, since their produc productions are smaller, they can move around and there's so many opera companies. I, I know in Ontario, there's a bicycle opera company and they fit all of their set on their bike and they can travel. And this cost, this cut the cost so much that they deserve communities that will never have access to opera uh, because let's be honest, the COC will not show up in a 150 uh, person community to present their shows. It would be ridiculous. Um, one of the pros uh, that was talked also by Mike is uh, to work for a main company is that when I did my show, it was a third of my annual income in four weeks. So this gives such a good freedom to an artist. If you do one production a year, it's four weeks, you've done a third or a quarter of your annual income. And then you can pick the, the project you wanna work on. You can, you can compose if you're a composer, you can, you can take time off also, which we don't do as often when we're freelancer because you need to make money. And so, uh, when I'm asked, do you prefer to work for indie or for, for main operas? I, I'd say both. I love to work main operas because I make more money and, and I can sing with an opera and singing in front of 3000 person is great. But indie, com indie opera will allow me to have way more artistic freedom and to have intimacy with the, the with the audience, like singing for a hundred person and be able to look someone in the eye and and connect with them is something that you cannot do in a three or 4,000 person uh, uh, hall. And so like my goal would be to be able to do uh, half and half to switch from indie to main opera companies. Wow, so a lot of uh, benefits to both, but some, uh, some, uh, detractions as well. That was really interesting. Um, 
as someone who has been on a learning journey with opera since um, starting our partnership with Pacific Opera Victoria. Um, this discussion especially was really interesting and something that we haven't really got into yet, but it sounds really exciting. Thank you all.